Hey guys, how's it going? Back at it again with the Tronic build. Um, I took a while on this, but I'm finally getting set up to where it's at now. Uh, same thing, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you watch my first one, you're just taking out all the parts just to get it uh, power coded. If not, you're not changing the frame color itself, then, you know, regard. For those who are planning on removing everything, stripping it down to bare core, uh, if you can go to a bike shop, they'll probably press out your bearings from your head stem. Not you can just order these off of Amazon, a bearing press kit, and also a whatever it's called that thing, that that silver piece. Uh, it's pretty cheap on Amazon. You can use those, and you'll technically pop out the bearings. Uh, you need to remove the bearings because if you're gonna send it to get powder coated or painted or whatever, you cannot have the bearings in there. Anyways, installing the front fork is pretty self-explanatory. Falcon PEV has a install video. Uh, the only thing I probably reused was just this part off of the Roadrunner itself. Um, but everything else is probably aftermarket. So there's that. Now, putting everything back together is pretty self-explanatory. Probably notice I don't have any front calipers or brakes. I have some Magura's MT7s Pros up there. I'll install that one day. But I just want to chew out the brake pads on mines. And if you're running the exact same setup, um, battery is going to be a little bit different because mine's a custom made battery. But, you know, if you have the Ryan dual enclosed uh, 250Rs and also the Ryan curve throttle that you just recently got or uh, planning on doing a full setup, this is how you're pretty much going to run it. Now, when you first get your 250Rs, they're gonna be in banana plugs. Uh, they're gonna be five millimeters. So your phase wires, they're gonna maybe come in a different size or if you're like me, somebody already did it, but they use a different size, uh, just chop it off and solder in new uh, banana plugs. Uh, and then your hall connectors, if your hall connectors are bad or same thing, uh, just chop them off and recrimp new ones and then use the correct connector. Now, when it comes to your curved throttle, if you're like me, you want to be neat, you'll run a connector. This way, uh, when you disconnect it or reconnect it, uh, it's easy to uh, pull it out and you don't have to chop off any wires. So that's one thing. And when you're running your, um, your throttle, you want black to black and then your Green is your ADC1, I believe, and your blue is your 3.3 volts. So use heat shrink and all that just to make it give it a cleaner setup and look. Now, when it comes to powering on and off your controller, <coughs> I know it says use a latch uh, button. I did use a latch button. I couldn't get the power to turn on the controller when I was running this. If anything, you just turn the button, the, the light on here, but never powered on the controller. So if you're, you know, if you're smart or if depending on your personal preference, I wanted a key. So that way, if somebody was like trying to ride off with this, they would need the key to turn on the controller itself. This comes in a set of four off of Amazon. It's pretty cheap. When you first get the controller itself, do a clean setup like mine's, like I have everything zip tied and, you know, labeled and all that. When you first get this set up, you have everything connected. You'll eventually get into your vest tool. You're going to have to figure out which is front and which is rear. I already labeled mine because I kind of figured it out. Here's a simple way of doing it is that once you get it connected, you go into your setup motors. You'll run through all of this. This right here, you might want to disregard. So you just press no. Go through your setups. Same thing. You want to go to large outrunner. Uh, click yes. This right here, you can configure it. But honestly, I don't really care yet. Uh, you can do this later. Um, go click OK. This right here, this is my setup. I'm not sure if you're going to be the same way, but I'm using direct uh, drive. The motor pose is 30. The wheel diameter, just it just indicates um, how big your wheel so it can calculate for speed. And then you run detection. Uh, I'm not going to run detection because I already did that. Now, one way you know is that whether or not you go into invert motors, it'll give you the option to orientate your wheel hub spin. So I am on, uh, when you're connected, you're gonna have a CAN bus tool. You can invert it. So it goes forward, 
If you invert it and you click forward again, it spins backwards. My It does that from time to time, but, you know, if anything, that's the option that you should be doing is figuring out with, what motors orientate which way. So, so I pretty much did this on my myself. I already figured out, and you'll just connect to the correct ones that you need to correct to. Uh, disregard the warning label because that is just a firmware. Uh, you can flash it, but I don't know how to do that. But yeah. Anyways, now once you get through all of that detection and all that, you want to go into your let me see your setup input. This is on Android. You you can do on computer too. Uh, iPhone disregard it because it's, it's not gonna work. So you will just click onto your desk. Um, pretty much your main one and ADC input and then you'll have your voltage and everything reading so when you do all that you'll detect and then once you detect you'll apply and write and it'll give you the correct voltage and then you'll just go through it again and then you click next and then depending on your controller type how you want it current is for it to just go but if you're running the twist throttle or say for example a adc2 button you will go into adc2 brake button if you're running another thumb throttle as a brake button but if you're running the ryan curve throttle you will just go into current reverse brake center and then you'll write and configure and once it's done it will technically start spinning and then when you want to slow down you just press it the other way and it'll slow down so pretty much that's it that's how you do it and then for setting up the motor configurations and all that that's for you to kind of like dial it in yourself because not everybody wants to run the same setup uh you want to run your setup specifically to your setup only because if you're running my setup battery capacity is not the greatest or it's not like it can't handle that much uh output of amps you might want to um slowly touch it here and there and where you can peek off this is how it is for setting up the tronic itself i'm gonna get this all cleaned up and that'll be in another video for you guys I'll catch you guys in the next video later and hopefully you guys uh, kind of understand how to set up a tronic from bare bones